Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The King's Road broadcast once again, the 24th of January, 2018, and we are moving forward in the year. Forward. Amen. You know, we should all be glad that the Lord has given us one more day. Amen. Of his life, his breath. Yes. To glorify his name. Amen. To speak his word. We Amen. should all wake up in the morning and we should go. Thank you, Lord. Take in that deep <laughs> breath and say, thank you, Lord, for this breath of life Amen. you've given me today. Amen. And thank you that this is going to be a wonderful day, that you have things planned for today. Amen. And that you are our Father, and that you love us. Amen. And you're going to show us mighty things today. Great and mighty things. We Hallelujah. need to start our day out that way. Praise His holy name. He because when we start our day out with negative thoughts, negative feelings, things like that, it affects us, doesn't it? Yes. It affects our the way our day goes. That's right. That's right. It even affects our health, the way that we feel and everything amen that's right so. i want to read this and we're going to pray father right here romans 12 this is how when sharon said starting our day with peace and everything amen and, and just loving the lord rejoicing i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God hallelujah father even this day we ask this to be so in our lives we offer ourselves to you today every one of us everyone hearing this Sharon and I here sitting Lord we thank you, Lord, for your word. We offer ourselves to you a living sacrifice this very day. And we ask you, O oh God, that you would move mightily, that you would take us up, O oh God, as your tools today to do your work, to walk in your way, to praise and worship you as kings and priests and prophets unto our God. Hallelujah. And that you would keep us ever in the palms of your hands and that you would crush the devil, Lord. Crush him down, Lord, and all of his plans, all of his schemes, all of the witchcraft spells, hexes, vexes, word curses, incantations, trying to be put upon your people from wherever, by whomever. Lord, throw them down today and crush them under our feet in Jesus' name. And stomp on that scorpion's head in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's running away. <laughs> Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Amen. Today's message, the rebels will fall. Don't be a rebel. Don't be a rebel. Okay? So we're going to talk about this because God is wanting us to remember that that spirit of rebellion is in the old nature of man. And it can rear its ugly head in, in ways that are so subtle, can't it? Huh? And it can be outright, you can see it outright rebellion. But you can also see it in subtle ways. You can see people rebel against the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you don't, we don't, none of us want to be rebels. No. Amen. Rebellion is as what? The sin of witchcraft. Right. See? The sin of witchcraft. And witchcraft is manipulation. So people that come against the truth are trying to manipulate things for their own good, for their own favor, for their control. They want to control everything. See? And they're practicing witchcraft. That's right. According to the word of God. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And God says no to that. So we're going to be in Numbers chapter 16. Numbers 16. This is the story of the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abraham. And so we're going to check this out because I want to read the first verse. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram. Now Dathan, I read this, so I want to point this out. Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, the sons sons of Reuben, okay, took men. So you have two tribes here: Korah, who was of the the tribe of Levi, and and his part of his family, okay. And then Dathan and Abraham were part of Reuben, okay. They were of the Reubenites, 
And these people began to come against mm -hmm. Moses because, mm -hmm. see, the way was hard. Okay. And, and we're going into times now when the way is going to get harder. As the judgments of God fall, as society breaks down, which we are anticipating that it's going to happen because God's judging the earth, you're going to see people who claim to be Christians will be rebel against the truth of God's word because they will say God's forsaken them. God's not helping them. You see what I'm saying? Just like Cora did. Just like Cora did. Yeah. Just, just so go ahead. And, uh, okay. Also, want you, what was Cora's job? These guys' job that you just okay. read. Cora and his family, they were Levites. Their job was to erect the tabernacle. All the curtains, all the poles, everything. They were to build it, and then they were to tear it down when the, when the cloudy pillars started to move. They, they had to tear everything down and pack it up and carry it. They were the ones carrying all the... This was their job. This is how they ministered unto the Lord. Okay? That was their call. The house of Aaron, okay, who was of the tribe of Levi, Moses. his and Moses, they were brothers. Their family, directly from Aaron right down, was the priests. They were the right. ones who offered the incense right. and they... Offered the sacrifices unto God. They mediated between God and the people. So okay. all these guys had their job. They had their job. They had their office. They had their That's place. Right. That's right. The problem with this was, from the get-go, they wanted Moses' place. That's right. <laughs> they wanted That's the priest's right. place. Okay. Right. So they, the rebellion kind of was bred out of that. Right. Exactly. So I'm glad you read and that not to mention, <laughs> And not to mention... It was it was coming out of that because of jealousy and envy. Yeah. It was also the fact that God wants us to see that He has a place for each one of us in the body of Christ and a job and a task to do. Right. Okay. Saint, if God reveals to you that your job is to pray, that's it. Just pray for the brethren scattered throughout the earth. That is a very high, that's the highest call it of God is, is to prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe no one will ever know that you're in your little apartment or you're in your house. And every day you get up and you spend time in prayer for the saints of the most high God. But let me tell you, when you fulfill that, I got holy bumps. That is such a powerful, powerful call upon a life. Okay. And not many can answer that call. Right. Because people want to be seen and known, you know. And, and God says no to that. Well, you have to deny yourself. Right. See, even in the word, the Lord, if my <laughs> people, if my people will, what? Humble themselves. Humble themselves. Right. And what? Pray. Pray. Seek so it, it calls for a humbling right. to pray. That's right. And a sacrificing. Right. Exactly. To pray. That's right. Exactly. You know, these guys... This is such an example here, you know. The end of Korah was like being swallowed up in the earth, okay? That was the end of his rebellion. So, we don't want to rebel. That's right. Against the Lord. Or even in this case, they were rebelling against Moses, which was God's messenger. Right. Exactly. Okay? We don't want to do that either. Because the end of those things are nowhere. They're nowhere. Hallelujah. Verse 2 of chapter 16 of Numbers. Now remember this is Korah and the the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, okay, the son of Levi, and then Dathan and Abiram, okay, the sons of Reuben. Now, go ahead. Okay. Verse 2. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. 250 princes of the assembly famous in the congregation men, men of, of renown. renown now see they they were they were the ones who were the rich people mm -hmm. in the congregation okay they were princes they were very well looked to people liked them they were they were known okay so to speak in the congregation okay now as we go along we'll share maybe an experience or two as the lord leads us of things that have happened to us because of people rising up, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, we we're just speaking what God's given us to speak. Mm -hmm. You see, 
and we speak it by the word of God. Yeah. And oh. we don't we don't uh sugarcoat it. Right. We give it as the sort of truth that it is, mm -hmm. and as people receive it, it blesses them. It tears down the old and builds up the new. Christ comes more out in our life. Hallelujah. What we have found over the years is, though, that um, people want to change how you speak. Right. They want to change your tone. Right. They want to change the character in which you're speaking and to suit them or to suit others to make it more palatable or more easy on them or whatever. Right. But see, we're not going to compromise that. Right. And I think those of you out there that know us know that, that we're, we're not going to compromise, right. that we're going to speak as God has us speak in the tone God has us speak. Right. Because we don't think about that. You know, if you were to think, if you're out there and you're preaching or whatever, and you're speaking or teaching, if you're going to be a preacher or teacher that's going to be piercing the hearts of people by the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be thinking about making sure that you're talking soft enough or uh, user-friendly enough to uh, make people comfortable. Right. That's right. If you're talking by the Spirit of God, you're not going to do that. That's right. You're not even going to have that thought in your mind. Right. You're just going to speak by the utterance of the Holy Spirit. And however the Lord has it come out is the way it's going to come Amen. out. And is the way it's going to stand as well. Amen. Hallelujah. So to try to change how someone speaks by the Lord is nothing more than witchcraft. That's right. It's nothing more than witchcraft. Okay, let's just get to the bottom line. If you're trying to do that, you're practicing witchcraft. Right. Plain and simple. Right. We didn't go to school like a seminary, okay? We were invited. We went to God's school. <laughs> we were invited by Just a guy. Just like Paul. Right. This guy heard us. <laughs> we were at the Waffle House, and uh, this was in 95, the year we were married. And this guy, he heard us talking about the Lord, and he, he said, you guys need to come to our Bible school. He gave us his card. <laughs> so we went and walked through there, you know. But... The Lord, Lord said, said no, 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 no. You don't go to no Bible school. No. He said, you go I'm to my your. School. He said, you go to my school. I the got school you in of school. Christ. That's right. And you know what? <laughs> That's the school he wants all of us in. That's right. That's the school he wants you in. That's right. The school of Christ. Right. Not the school of the seminary or the school of man. The school of Christ. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and it was. It was. I think. What was it? So that would be five. It was twelve years later, when. We found the book, The School of Christ by T. Austin Sparks. <laughs> you know, God said, I'm putting you in the school of Christ. Yeah. And then it was nine, twelve, no, let's see, five, twelve years later. And so I just praise God for that, you know. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing is, this is uh, spontaneous. Right. Okay. Ministry is spontaneous. Amen. Preach by it. the Spirit of That's God. That's right. That's right. From the very get go, even before we we're married we were ministering together right that's right it was just part of us it was in us right the holy spirit the in holy us. spirit that, in you it, it, wants to minister right right so, it's just so let's not let's not be a rebel and and say no to the holy spirit because oh well sally might not receive that lord or jimmy might not like me anymore if i tell him that right, you see right. you that's can't being be a rebel effective. right don't you be a rebel not be effective if you have that attitude <clears throat> okay and now we're not only going to look at this part of it the people that are rebels, but we got to look at the part of Moses. Okay, how did Moses react? What did Moses do? So as we read this, let's talk about that as well. We're going to talk about That's all these. That's important too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Read verse 2 again. 16 to Numbers. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel. Now see, they're gathering the people with them mm -hmm. for the rebellion. 250 princes of the assembly famous in the congregation, men and renowned. So they went and got the guys that were important mm -hmm. in the eyes of men. Mm -hmm. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, 
and the Lord is among them, wherefore they lift ye up yourselves. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves. Therefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Now what does that sound like right there? It, it, Jealousy. Jealousy. They're saying, why are you lifting yourself up, Moses? We, we're all holy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're all holy. They, and uh, why do they have to say they're holy right. if they're holy? Now, I want you to see this next part. Verse 4. And when Moses heard it, he fell, he upon, fell upon his face. Upon why do you suppose he fell upon his face? Because he knew what was coming next. Right. Okay. See, Moses was an intercessor. Okay. He fell upon his face. You read the book of Deuteronomy and he talks about these times when he fell upon his face for 40 days before the Lord for the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a true intercessor. There are so many people right now who are saved and they're in this church system and they're in this organization and they're trapped in there and they don't know how to get out you know they know they have to some of them but they don't know how and the what we tell people when they tell us that how can i get you just walk you just out do it. you walk out you go out that's what you do when the lord told us to come out we went for three weeks we got all dressed up and went to go to church somewhere else after he pulled us out of the Catholic Church remember mm -hmm. and the Lord said this is not what I want you to do I mean we would drive to three different churches and then end up at the Chinese restaurant buffet you know we would just and this is like and God said I don't want said, you doing no. this you know yeah. God says get a King James Bible and get with me be with me and that's when the Lord really started schooling us in his way mm -hmm. and walking in his way mm -hmm. and and so praise the Lord for that I thank you Jesus for that so Moses the intercessor remember that when people come against you our job is to pray mm -hmm. pray 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 let God keep going verse 5 and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company his all his little uh, gathering of a rebellion right. company saying even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy right and will cause him to come near unto him even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him so moses is saying the lord's going to settle this deal right he's so going to show who are his and who exactly. are not exactly and so here he is he's just he's just telling them what to do because i know the spirit of god speaking to moses telling him okay verse six this do take you censers Korah and all his company and put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow and it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose he shall be holy ye take too much upon you ye sons of Levi right sons of Levi you take too much upon you. See, their job, once again, was to carry the tabernacle. And they're trying See? to do Moses' job, too. Right. So, that ain't working. And then and he's going he's gonna to give them an instruction here, verse 9. Verse 8, let's see. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Right, I'm sorry. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them he's he's basically reinforcing their position he's telling them that what they're the position, supposed to have that's exactly right see and he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren the sons of Levi with thee and seek ye the priesthood also right in other words you seeking our job also, right. you guys? When God's already given you this job here to do and has separated you unto this job, and now you want my job too? Right. Verse 11. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. I'll read it again. For which cause both thou and all thy company... Are gathered together against the Lord what did he just say this is why you're gathering together against me 
and the Lord, because you want my position. It's basically what he's saying to them. And you want the priesthood also? And Moses sent to call Dathan and finish Abram. Finish that verse 11, because you didn't finish that okay. verse. Okay. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron, that ye murmur against him? Mm -hmm. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eli, Eliab. Eliab, which said, We will not come up. See, see that Re rebellious, rebellious attitude? We will not come up. We will not come up. We're not going to pay attention to what you're saying, Moses. They thought they could do the job better. Mm -hmm. It is, is, is it? it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? See what they're doing? They're jealous. They're mad at Moses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't like the way. See, when things get tough, I'm telling you, when things get tough in this world, the true believer is going to, I mean, it's like the false are going to just blame the true. They're going to blame the true. Okay. Well, they'll be exposed. If right. they're trying to blend in with God's people, they're going to be exposed. They're going to, because they're going to show out. Yeah. And they're know? being exposed right now. You can't blend in with the true people of God if you're false for right. very long. That's right. Amen. Amen. God will expose That's you. That's right. Verse 15. And Moses, let's see, and Moses was very wroth mm. and said unto the Lord. Now listen. He said unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Right. What's he saying to the Lord there? He's telling the Lord don't accept anything from right, them. That's right. Now see, Moses, on the other hand, he he cried out to the Lord for mercy, but this is a different thing right now. He's just telling the Lord not to respect their offering. He's saying, don't respect their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. I've done good. I've done good by them, Lord, okay? Mm -hmm. And then verse 16. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, <coughs> and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. Hmm. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Now, just look at the pride involved in that rebellion with Korah. Mm. And he, how in the world could he get all the congregation on his side? They were looking good. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can think. Yeah, and I so mean, they, they came and stood right there with Moses, right. knowing God was fixing to the, the, appear there. Right. The people were in a bad way at the time. They had, I mean, there was it was very hard in the wilderness, very hard. And they look at they were looking at Korah and, and his sons and his people. And they were saying all those princes, you know, OK, we're going to have a better time now. We're going to have a better way. It's going to be easier for us. OK, and that's what they were hoping. OK, but they didn't realize what they were doing. See. And go ahead in verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Okay, listen. This is now, what, this this is, is this what is God another, thinks about and it. And this is another call in the scripture. The Lord's showing me right now. I need, I'm need. i going to have to get a pen and mark this in my Bible. This is another call. Come out. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Come out. Verse 21. Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Now this is what there. God said. 
Separate mm -hmm. yourselves from this congregation. And look at verse 22. Once again, we have this wonderful man of God, Moses, and his brother Aaron. Read verse 22, dear. I wanted to say, too, about this previous verse, about separating yourself okay. from among this congregation. Among what congregation? This rebellious congregation that's coming against my messenger. Right. My person. Right. Now, here's the question. Is that going on today? Is there a rebellion like that going on today against the true people of God, the true messengers of God? Is there a congregation being gathered by Korahs against them? I say yes. There is. But this is what happens to the Korahs that gather congregations against the true pe people of God and tell their lies and their stories and whatever it is they do to convince the congregation that they need to come against the true people of God. This is what happens, okay? And this is what God thinks about it, too. I'm going to read this again, 21. Separate yourselves from among this congregation. In other words, if you're the true, you better get out from among that rebellious group Amen. Right now, Amen. the Lord says Amen. that separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. In a moment. <coughs> and they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? With all the congregation. See, Moses and Aaron knew these guys were sinning. But he also knew the whole congregation wasn't sinning. They were sinning and causing those people yeah. to be drawn away from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And Moses stood in the gap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 23. So here the Lord says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, the Lord was ready to just consume them. Okay. That's what he thought about what they were doing. But Moses stood in the gap once again. Right. And Verse so the Lord three. says, okay, then do this. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from among the tabernacle from of Korah, the, amen. Dathan, and Abram. In other words, get away from these guys that are doing this rebellion against me and my people. And then my message. And then you remember, Dathan and Abram wouldn't come. So, Verse 25. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. What did he call them? Wicked, wicked men. Wicked men. Those that were this heading up the a, rebellion. This is such a call to come out of the churches, I'm it, telling you right now. Not only that. But there's such a thing going on against the true people of God. God wants and the you to come. I mean, God, God wants His people coming out of this Babylonian whore church. I'm telling you. And He spake unto the congregation, saying, "Depart, I pray you, from, from the, tent. the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs." Lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Man. Now, he's given a warning to these people. Ooh God always gives warning before he comes in to consume or destroy. He always does. Amen. So they get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram on every side. And Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. And he's telling them, You're going to know that God sent me. And basically, you're going to know you're coming against God right. when you're coming against me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth. No, you need to read oh, verse 29. Okay. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, 
then the Lord hath not sent me. Okay, see, Moses is, he's just stating a fact here, okay? Stating a fact. There's going to come a time when you will just state a fact. Mm -hmm. We've done that. We've stated facts to yep. people. Yep. This is a fact. One time, these people in this little fellowship we were in, Sharon was trying to tell them that this one lady was not saved. And, and she knew it by the Spirit that she was not saved. They had already baptized and, her and, and baptized her and everything. And she was not saved. No. And so finally, uh, for a whole year, Sharon was communicating this to people in the leadership. And they didn't believe her. And then one day, the lady blurted out herself, right out of her own mouth. It came out. I'm not even saved. Okay? Yeah. I mean... You just leave it with the Lord, and the Lord will take care of it. He vindicates every word you speak. When you're speaking for the Lord, he, he will vindicate the word. Yes, he will he vindicate will. the word. That's yes, all there is will. to it. Okay? And like Sharon was saying, we've had people try to control us how we speak, you know, and, and everything else. And, hey, God says, you speak like I tell you to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's what we do. Okay? If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me, Moses said. Verse 30. But if the Lord make a new thing, a and, new the, thing. and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have, have provoked, provoked the Lord. The Lord. He's basically speaking out their judgment. Right. Because that's exactly what happened to him. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words. He just got through speaking the words that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Now, what's his statement right there from the Lord? You'll see the wicked one day, and you won't the next. Praise the Lord. And not only them, but why did he take all that appertained to them and their family and children and everything? Because there wasn't going to be nothing left of that wickedness. That's right. No seed left of that wickedness right. when God got through. That's right. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Now, do you see how serious it is to rebel? Mm -mm -mm. This principle still stands today. Amen. That's exactly right. The principle is there. It doesn't happen in the same way. We'll give you an example and sometimes it does, though. We were in an assembly, the same assembly we've talked about, and the guy that they recognize as the head elder, who was voted in by the people, not put there by the Holy Spirit. But anyway, this guy, he didn't stand for the truth. He rejected the truth. He he rejected the truth. He rejected. He knew it was the truth. He knew it was the truth. He agreed with us several occasions, the truth. But he rejected the truth that the Lord had us bring. And what happened to that guy? Well, he ended up getting a disease. He went on a trip to Hawaii. Yeah, he, went, he got a disease where now he cannot smell. And he cannot taste. And he cannot taste. He cannot taste and see the, the goodness of God anymore. Right, right. And he cannot. And God said, I will not smell in your assemblies That's anymore. Right. I mean, this is what happened to this man. That's exactly right. We didn't do it. God did it. Right. Okay. God is the controller of things. I mean, God controls our lives. Hallelujah. When we're surrendered to God, he controls our lives and he takes care of the enemy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. Yes, he does. There was a guy coming against me one day and I was talking to him on the phone and the, he just was calling me all this, these names and coming against me. And the Lord just had me rise up and give him a warning. And I did over the telephone. And that very moment, a fire broke out in this big transfer station where they were broadcasting yeah, from studio. it was in year 2000 mm -hmm. i mean and i didn't know that was going to happen but it did happen mm -hmm. god did it mm -hmm. you see i mean the lord says a fire goes before you the lord is not jacking around that's right that, that that's the bottom line of the whole thing that's it god's not jacking around you know people think they can be flippant and they can uh 
cause a rebellion and try to turn people against the truth and the people that are speaking the truth and they don't they're flipping about it but see god sees right god sees and god hears amen and god will judge that yeah. and he will judge that person for what they're doing just like he did right here right in exactly. numbers that's right exactly. the principle still stands mm -mm -mm. now verse 34 after the ground clave open he swallowed them all up verse 34 16 34 numbers and all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. In other words, they could hear him screaming as they were falling into the earth and the earth was closing back over them. They could hear them screaming. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So what was that? That was the thing to them to say, you better not get in the same line as That's they were. Right. That's right. That was a warning to them. Verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Mm -hmm. In other words, those that joined in with them got the same thing, didn't they? Right. See how serious that is? That's just serious. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Moses saying speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder for they are hallowed, hallowed. the censers of these sinners against their own souls let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar for they offered them before the Lord Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, Come near to offer incense before the Lord. Right. That he be not as Korah. That he be not as Korah and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. Now, I think it's interesting that it says here, no stranger. Referring to those that were doing these things as strangers strangers to the Lord in other words God didn't know him right God didn't know him now let me let me let's back up a minute and I want to give a little history here it's important that we see this these are the people saints who saw the mountain all on the smoke they saw the fire of God on Mount Sinai they heard the voice of God I mean, these are the people who were, they came through the Red Sea. They saw a water, wall of water on the right and on the left. They came across a dry shot ground. They, they drank out of the, the pool of Mara that the water was made, it was bitter, but it was made fresh. They had all these signs, the manna from heaven. Everything God was saying, I am the Lord, I am your God, I love you, I take care of you. And look at this rebellion. That's why it's so evil, see. Because God has given us salvation in Christ. And our he's given us power, hallelujah, from Christ's sacrifice, okay? The crucifixion of Christ, the cross, the power, the, the death of self, the resurrection of Christ in us, to newness of life. And then as Christians, we make excuses, right? For not doing what God has told us to do. Excuses. And here's this congregation, okay? Now, verse 41, pick it up. Now, you think about this, and you tie this. Why do people make excuses to God for not doing what God's telling them to or do? Or blame someone else. Blame someone else. Put yeah. the blame on this person or that person. Like they did. See? They put it on Moses. Right. <laughs> well, God showed him who was his and who wasn't, didn't he? Pretty plain. Okay, now, we had this judgment. We just saw these rebels, and they were just... 
absolutely rebelling against the Lord because they were coming against Moses and Aaron, the priesthood. They said, we're, we're, we're priests too. Yeah. See? We're hmm. holy uh, too. Yeah. yeah. We're something too. God's with See? us too. But, but once again, the most important thing is when you are walking with Christ, you are born again and filled with the Spirit of God. You walk with the Lord. You do what he commands you in your heart. And that is when the Lord, he is absolutely receiving you and he's blessing you and he's keeping you. And when you go through the hard times, you know the Lord's right there by your side. You can feel him pick you up sometimes and carry you through. I'm telling you what, God is almighty and he knows how to take care of his people. Verse 41 of chapter 16. Look what happens now. But on the morrow, all the congregation, all the congregation, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured right after this happened. Yeah, right, 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 right. Murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Ye Lord. Ye have killed the people of the <laughs> Lord, Moses. I saw you over there with a big old chisel and a pry bar opening up the earth and throwing Dathan and his family down in there. Ye have killed the, the children of the Lord. See, this is what I was talking about yeah, a minute ago. Yeah. They're going to blame us. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, you be like Moses. You be like Aaron. Keep reading, honey. Well, I want to give an example okay, give of an example. this very thing. One time we were in this place, and the Lord had us help this guy. And, I mean, we were helping him and ministering to him, to him and everything. It was in the same area that this fellowship was. And the people of this congregation were poisoning his mind against us. And they <laughs> kept it up and kept it up and kept it up until he started changing toward us, started acting different toward us. And our response was to pray for him and to keep trying to talk to him and everything. And there came a time when he just said, the Lord had us up in his meadow at the time in our motor home. And he just, one day he just said, I just wish you would leave, you know. No, he wish I, He said, I wish you would never have come. Oh, I wish you would never have come or whatever. And we, and were, he like, invited and we us. were like, oh he yeah, invited he invited us. us. Right. And so we said, okay, we're going to go. And we knew when we left that God was going to move in and take care of things. You know, in the Bible, it talks about, this is what is so amazing about the Word of God, because it will show you everything. Right. And in the Word of God, the enemies of God, what they would do is they would cut off their toes. The big their, toe? Their big, great toe on their foot, and their thumbs. They would cut their enemies' toes and thumbs off. Well, what happened to this man is he did get his big toe cut off after we left. And these people kept poisoning him and kept poisoning him. And, and all the, the while, two weeks before he died, we're trying to reach yeah, out to him. We're trying to reach out to him. And I remember, I'll never forget it. We went up to his trailer. The Lord had me in such deep intercession for this guy two weeks prior. And we went up there and we were trying to talk to him about the Lord and ministering to him. And now we were with this time, man for 10 months. Yeah. We, we were fellowshipping with him for 10 solid months every single day. But the devil came in through these people in this congregation. And this is the same kind of deal, you guys. It's going on right here in number 16. Raising up a rebellion against God's people. Now, what did they tell them? That they would agree to rebel along with Korah. No telling what they told them. Okay? And that's the same deal with this. But see, what happened is we went up there and we tried to minister to him. And, and I'll tell you what, at this point, the man couldn't even see. He had diabetes. He could not he even had, recognize us. He had cancer and some things. He and... could not even recognize us. And he said, who is it? And we told him, we said, he said, no, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want your help. And so said. we shut the door and I will never forget that feeling. It was like God shut the door. Okay. 
and we walked away and I was just weeping and crying and weeping and crying and that night I had something attack me that nearly killed me and the Lord showed me it was coming from up there and so he told us he said I want you to leave this mountain right now I want you to leave that this was, mountain that was a week or right so now. later because right now. it was it was uh, on the 6th of January when that happened because we left the next morning on the 7th that was your birthday right. of January mm -hmm. and that was in 2006 January well, so of 2006 the Lord told us to leave and so we did that very day well we didn't know it at the time but the lady where we were staying now wait a minute let me back up a minute okay I have to on the 6th this is the day, the 6th of January, Sharon comes running in here into the living room of the motorhome, and she says, I'm dying, I'm dying, I feel I feel like I'm dying, and, and her legs were ice cold, and death was just crawling up her legs, and she was really, I said, really, pray. and she said, pray, <laughs> read Psalm 91, call a friend of ours in Oklahoma, to pray. I called, and we started praying, and she made it through, God and that's when the Lord spoke yeah. to her and said, we need to, you know, right. she said, John, we got to get off the mountain right now. And so the next day on Sharon's birthday, we left the mountain, took the motor home. We went to Oklahoma. And later that morning, about 12 o'clock, our friend from Arkansas called where we were staying. And she told us that that man, that morning, he walked out of his little place where he was living and fell down and died right there in the straw right yeah remember yeah and they found him laying there and the dogs were licking him his yeah. dogs were licking him mm -hmm. and i will read this because this is you brought you brought this up and then the lord showed us this this verse here in right here in isaiah 25 and i will read this and this is so serious you know and we're nothing sharon and i know that and it's in it when you see this happen to people because you're preaching the truth and you're trying to reach them and you love them you care about them, and they reject God's word. It's a serious offense. People make light of it, okay? The principle here is you believe the word of God, and you receive it into your life, and you are blessed, okay? Blessed. Do you want to be blessed? Hallelujah, I want to be blessed. See? But people say, oh, you're not blessing me if you talk loud. Well, I'm sorry. God's coming. Jesus is coming. He has a horn. He's going to blow it so loud, it's going to burst everybody's eardrums if you're not in the Lord. You're just going to be totally wiped out if you're not in Christ. Okay? He's coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's coming. Amen. See? We want to be in Christ. We are safe in Christ. He has delivered us from the wrath to come. He has delivered us from the wrath, I said. Hallelujah. We have to be in Christ. In 25 of Isaiah, it says, and I'm going to read this verse. This is the verse the Lord gave us when we heard what happened to that man. Right. Hallelujah. Well, here it is. Let me, for, in verse 10, it says, For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dung hill, okay? Mm -hmm. Straw. This guy passed away on the straw, see? And then his sons came to get all of his stuff together to sell it and everything, and, and uh, I'll tell you what happened. And we went up and helped his sons get some stuff together, and I was trying to fix, get, his, truck. fix his truck. This guy had a truck. I was trying to get it started. So they could sell it. So they could sell it. And fire kept shooting out of the carburetor. Just fire was just, flames were just coming out. I finally just gave up and said, I can't get it going. He gave you that dream. He gave me a dream. And the guy was in the dream. And he was on this dock, like a loading dock. And his face was all gray. And this big truck came in, big giant truck. And it was filled with demons. And he was pushed onto this back of this truck with demons and the truck took off and I woke up and God showed me see this is what I'm telling you God will show you sometimes what happens to people mm -hmm. okay 
and I knew what happened to that man because he rejected the word of the Lord. Okay? He rejected God's word. And this is what's so serious about choosing the false gospel over the true gospel. And this right. is what that man did. There were two in particular in that place that were poisoning him like crazy. He thought that it was a good thing, but it was poisoning him and turning him into the wrong path. Right. To where his end was hell. Right. And then even after the fact, these cores of rebellion came up and were saying that it was John and my fault. Basically the same thing these guys did right here. Mm -hmm. Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, God did that. God did that. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 42. And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this con congregation, that I may con okay, here it is once again, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces once again. I See. think the Lord must have just been shaking his head right after they saw what happened to Korah. Here they come. Doing the same thing. And listen to verse 46. Go ahead. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. Okay. People, <coughs> pardon me, people began to die in the congregation all around, and they were just falling over, dead. And Aaron took the censer and he ran over the top of the dead bodies to get to the line where people weren't falling. Keep reading. And Verse 47. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Mm -hmm. Now see, we want to stand between the dead and the living. Okay? That's the call. I mean, see, it's the word of God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word made flesh. He's one with his word. The Holy Spirit and the word are one. Amen? 1 John chapter 5. And we can stand in the gap. For the brothers and sisters in Christ. We can stand in the gap for those people who are so blinded. They're, they're the ones with the, the, the cares of this life. The deceitfulness of riches. Okay. Has choked off the life of Jesus. Okay. When we talk to them, they confess. They believe in Jesus and everything. Right. But the, the cares of this life has absolutely choked off the life of Christ in them. And they're just like zombies. They're just like, yeah. you know, sitting there and. God says, stand in the gap for these because many of these will wake up. God, God has shown us that many people are going to wake up in the, in the hour of judgment that God sends to this nation, America and, and Western Europe, Eastern Europe, all over the world. That people who they know, but then they don't really care and they, they're not really into it. You know, they just go maybe once a year or tw twice a year to church or whatever. And they, it, but they know that Jesus is real. But God's going to wake multitudes up. This has been our prayer, and I believe he's going to do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because he had, he told Elijah, hey, listen, I've got 7,000 over here, Elijah. You think you're the only one, Elijah? i got 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to bow, have not kissed the wood. See, they didn't bow down and kiss the wood. So we know today God has multitudes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Keep reading, hon. 
Now they that died in the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred, beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the plague was stayed. Amen. Amen. Such a lesson here. Right. The rebels will fall. Don't be a rebel. Now, during these, we've shared some experiences today, and every one of those experiences, when, when these things happen, the first thing we do is we go to the Lord. And we begin to weep before the Lord. And I, I just, because it's a serious, serious thing, see? And you don't want to see anything happen to anybody. You want people to receive and get blessed. But then they rebel, they rebel, they rebel. And it's just so, so sad. And we talk about this congregation. And I guess God had us go there to learn so many things and to see so many things, how people can be so cold and so hard who profess the name of Jesus. Well, he always but gives people a chance to. I think what grieved us more than anything is that we went into the homes of these people and ministered to them, and they were receiving, 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 and being blessed. And then one by one, they started getting poisoned, 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 poisoned. By Korah. By Korah. Mm -hmm. And same thing happened. By Jezebel. By same thing and, happened. And all these things. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord just said, you're done move on mm -hmm. and and we did and then he sent us back you know and that happened twice and each every time the lord has sent us back there they've rejected they've rejected it's the mercy and of god though because they're not going to have no excuse on judgment day right because the lord's going to tell them i sent my servants but it's just he did just he did it with us to be an example yes to the body of christ mm -hmm. god is doing these things around the country yeah. Here in America, he's doing these things. He has his hidden ones all over. In the country you live in, God is doing that there with you. See, you be patient. You wait You wait upon the Lord, okay? We know people in England. We know people in Austria. We know people uh, in Italy. We know people all over the world, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we look on our YouTube, they have uh, demographic things. I mean, people are seeing the messages all over the earth, even in Israel. Everywhere, okay, Ukraine, Russia, China, uh, India. I mean, and so God has hidden ones everywhere. And there's going to be rebels. There is going to be rebels, but God tells us, don't be a rebel. Okay, I mean, that's for me first. God says, don't be a rebel. If I tell you to do something, you go do it. Amen? I tell you to speak something, you speak it. And you don't be afraid to speak it, see? Because in that hour, he says, I will give you what to say. I will give you what to speak. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you today for this very sombering word, Lord. And a very true word. And Lord, we bless you and praise you. And Father, we ask today that you would search our hearts once again each day and see if there be any wicked, evil way in us. And Lord, we pray that you would take your hyssop to our heart today, Lord. Father God, dip it in the precious blood of Jesus. Cleanse us, cleanse us, O God, from head to toe. Hallelujah. Let us be vessels of gold, O Lord, used of you to speak forth your truth where we live, to the world, to those around us. Make us into prayer warriors, O God, that we would intercede and pray for the body of Christ and for those you are bringing in. O God, you do your work today. You move mightily among your flock today. And you wake people up, Lord, to the fact that Yes, there are rebels, and they will fall. And you tell your people today, don't be a rebel. Be obedient to me. Do what I command you to do in your heart and by my word. And follow me. Walk in white. For I, saith the Lord Jesus, have delivered you from the wrath to come. You have nothing to fear from man. I, say the Lord Jesus, he says, 
A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that word, Lord. Oh, we bless you and praise you and glorify you. Open every heart, Lord, right now. Let us remember, Lord, that you are with us and you have surrounded us with a wall of holy fire as you speak about in Zechariah chapter 2, Lord. You have your angels all around, your chief princes protecting and keeping each and every one of us wherever we are located. We thank you, Jesus, and we bless your holy name. Lord, you come against those who are coming against us, Lord. You do it. You take care of it, O oh God. And Lord, we do ask you, those who are deceived, Lord, those who are chosen but yet deceived by the enemy, that you would wake them up today, O oh God, and crush the devil off of their minds and off of their lives, O oh God, and bring them back into the full truth, Lord, of, of where they began, O oh God, but they got deceived along the way. You bring them back, Lord. Bring the backsliders back in and crush the serpent under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Our email address, if you want to comment or just uh, talk to us for about anything, you write to thekingsroad2000 at gmail.com, thekingsroad2000 at gmail.com. And be encouraged. The Lord is speaking absolute truth to his people. And he wants us to know that he sees us. He knows where we are. He knows what we're going through. He knows our needs. Every one of us. And God says, I'm right here to help you. Hallelujah. I'm right here to help you, say the Lord. And it's so beautiful to know. Amen. I just praise God for it. He's so good. Hallelujah. Once again, the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. Monday through Friday, King's Road broadcast, 7 a.m. Central Time, United States. Be sure and share it. Be sure and download it and tell your friends and just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Share the word. Let the Lord publish the word. Amen. That's what we do. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. His name, which is his authority, his character, his dominion be in and upon your life today. As you go forward, conquering and to conquer, trampling down the devil under your feet in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. God bless you all and have a blessed day. Hallelujah.